Hey everybody, I want to welcome you to Five for a Change. What we're here doing today is just checking out some LEDs. I've always been fascinated with LEDs, and so I'm trying to figure out different ways of using them. Now, I've made some for the chicken coop in a video that you can see after this, but also I've made a few other ones that are flexible, but also durable. And I want to show you how I do it. Now, LEDs, if you buy them off Amazon or whatever, they'll come in a roll like this, usually about 16 feet. You can get longer, but it's going to cost you more. And it usually comes with a plug-in that you can adapt to a 12-volt adapter, or if you want, you can even run them off a 110 that converts them over. It just depends. Make sure when you get LEDs that you get the appropriate adapters or plug-ins according to the LEDs. The cool part about LEDs is that you can cut them about any length that you want. So if you want to make it two foot or you want to make it six inches, you can do that. And you can cut them at the cut marks, which is marked by the line. Also, you'll see where you can connect your positive and negative wires. So this can be a tricky part. You're going to want to take a utility knife and cut off just enough of that silicone in order to be able to access those points for your wires. The reason I call it tricky is because on the back side, you can literally slice into the circuitry of the LED lights and you don't want to do that. So when you're doing this, be very careful not to slice into the back side. Also, the back side has a sticky part to it. Now, I usually don't trust this. A lot of times what I'll do is if I'm not really too worried about how it looks, I'll put Gorilla Glue, just a thin layer of Gorilla Glue on the back because that stuff seems to stick to everything. With this project, what I'm doing is I'm taking some rubbered mat, and the reason I'm taking the rubbered mat is because it's flexible, and I'm laying these LED strips on straight. The reason is because this rubber mat is actually going to wrap around air ducting, and I'll show you that here in a second. But I've got my strips and how long I want them, and accordingly to how I want them, and now the thing is you'll want to go ahead and either glue them down first and then cut the ends off, or if you want to, I suggest the easiest way is to cut all the ends off first and then glue them down how you want them. The next step is going to be running the positive and negatives. So what I've done is I've already created one that I want and I tried to spray paint it to kind of match the ducting, but I didn't do a very good job. So uh, this is what it's going to look like. And I'm not really too worried about the Gorilla Glue that is on the outsides here. Gorilla Glue has a tendency to kind of expand, almost like that expandable foam. So once it dries, it usually leaves an edge out here. And if you're not watching it, it it's about impossible to get off. But that's my whole point with this is I don't want these falling off because I don't trust the sticky stuff on the back of the, the LED lights themselves. So this is a good example of what I'm talking about here. I've cut the ends off with the silicone and I've exposed the points right there. Also, you can see what the Gorilla Glue does once it dries. You don't see this when you put it down, but Gorilla Glue has a tendency to expand and so it expands outside there. But then we come over here and you can see where I went ahead and soldered the points together. Now, I like to do on here the white is actually negative and that's just because mainly the wire I had and I like to do if negative is on top and positive is on bottom then I come up here and the next LED is going to have the positive right across from the positive and then same here it's negative there so once I come down here this is also going to be negative and that's an easy way to set these up so that you don't forget or mix them up but you always got to make sure that you're on the positive and positive and negative and negative. And I have gone ahead and soldered the wires from positive to negative, positive and all the way into a loop. And the good thing about DC is you don't have to finish anything off. You can actually leave that open. But I've got this one to where it's going to attach to another one. And like I said with my other thing, it, the reason it's on this rubber mat is so that it wraps around the ducting and it will be a part of the ducting. The other cool part I'm doing with this is I'm going to have it hooked up to solar and so these lights in the section that doesn't have lights, these lights are going to be the lights for this and they're all going to be run off solar. And the reason I chose rubber is because for one, I just had some rubber mat sitting around 
And for two, it's perfect because I can just wrap it around the ducting like this and then run the wires there and there. And there's such low voltage, you really don't have to worry about too much. Now that I got the LED lights up, I wanna run them off of my solar setup. So I'll show you how I've got that hooked up. Right here, I've got a couple solar panels that are in the window and they fit very nicely and the screen holds them in. Luckily, they fit perfectly. And I've got the wires coming down here to the charge controller. And then we have the inverter to the left. But of course, you've also got to have a battery to be able to do this if you want to be able to run it at night. So I've got a Trollmaster battery down here. And this is a deep cycle type battery. And I've got it coming back up here, going into the charge controller, and then the inverter plugged in to the charge controller. Right here for the LED lights, I have a special plug that converts 110 into 12 volts. And then I have it coming over here to my switch. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and flip that switch. And that's how I run my lights. All right, guys, I wanted to show you the difference with the LED lights. It's not completely dark because I have some ambient light back there and I just wanted you to be able to still see me. But I wanted to show you what the difference is with the LEDs that I put up. So as you can see, it's not the brightest lights in the world, but I can see what I'm doing now on this side. This whole side of this building is without lights and so I decided hey why not make them solar powered and that's the cool thing about it is they're solar powered so just once again I want to show you guys what this looks like and I'm gonna zoom in because this is actually the air ducting in the place and I thought wouldn't it be cool to be able to put the lights up there also what I did was I had a little extra of the rubber pieces from another light project I did so I used those as straps and up there you'll see the brass those are little brass tabs that i have from office supplies as you can see it's not exactly beautiful but it is practical and that's what i'm going for here but yep just all hooked up got the wires going down and there you go the lights are led and solar powered now these leds aren't super super bright but my goal was just to get some light over here because some light is better than none. One of the LEDs that I have is one that I use for stuff like this and they're remote controlled and you can use them for quite a few options and LEDs are becoming big because they don't use a whole lot of power. And so since they don't use a whole lot of power, it makes them a lot more efficient. The other cool thing about them is they last a lot longer. The one I'm using over here is one of these LED lights. It runs off of a battery and it's remote controlled. It's also brighter because the LEDs are really close together, therefore giving it a nice bright feel to it. If I would have put the LEDs closer on these, I would have a lot brighter situation going on over here. But my goal was just to get some light, and that's all I really wanted. So, goal accomplished. I hope you enjoyed that video. I love LED stuff and I'm going to continue to get better at it. I'm not very good at it right now. It takes a lot of time, especially when it comes down to soldering, also using the right wires, finding the right length, etc, etc. But right now I'm kind of doing things kind of in more of a utility mode, I call it, because it doesn't have to look pretty and it doesn't have to be aesthetically pleasing to the eyes. And that's something that I learned how to make it look ugly first and then I make it look beautiful later but that's something I wanted to share with you guys I wanted to thank you for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe and as always I've always got other videos at the end of this video and don't forget go to fiveforchange.org join us on our social site hang out with us let us know your ideas if you got some better ideas for me leave them down in the comments below well once again thank you for joining us and I'll talk to you later